Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This is a show dedicated to helping you become a better organist. We're your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Usha Motuzaita Pinkavichina. We have over 25 years of experience of playing the organ. And we've been teaching thousands of organists online from 89 countries since 2011. So now let's jump in and get started with the podcast for today. We hope you'll enjoy it. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Usha. Let's start episode 700 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by Pedro and he writes, Hello Vidas, I have just started watching your channel. I am 50 years old but still a baby organist. Thank you for your score of the meditation Nuncom Der Heiden Highland. I bought it as soon as I watched you play it. I will probably play it several times this Advent. My dream is to improve my improvisation techniques. I think this uh, has uh, goes through more musical analysis and trying to write down music, small pieces. I would also like to be more confident when choosing the appropriate registration. And finally, I would like to change my finger touch that is still one of a trained pianist. Things that hold me uh, to reach that goal is time to play more often and access to an organ. Thank you, Pedro. So, uh, this is a 700th uh, episode. Congratulations to everyone. Oh, yes. Congratulations to everyone and to us that we have so much patience to do so many podcasts. But actually, it was a fun, fun, fun ride. Yeah. And now Pedro wants to know how to how to improve his uh, improvisation techniques. Let's let's talk about that uh, for starters. Yes, you know, if I would be Pedro, I wouldn't waste my time by writing down, you know, any type of compositions because it takes very much of your time, a lot of your time actually, and. That doesn't give you much confidence in improvisation. Actually, what you could really do to spend more time at the keyboard and to do some some harmon exercises, to play some cadences, to do some transpositions, you know, to play sequences. You're right, Osha. I think um, harmony is the foundation of improvisation, and and. Um, Pedro would do really well to practice it first, not to spend s- entire time on uh, harmony, of course. He needs to create those uh, pieces and and improvise them, but uh, harmony will give him a good start, obviously. The starting point, step one, for me, would be to uh, figure out what he wants to do with improvisation, because there are many other, many goals in improvisation, many styles, many uh, genres, and uh, practical applications, right? So, you first have to figure out what would you like to learn, right? Uh, Practically, how to apply it, and then and then once you know that, you take the baby steps towards your goal. Yes, very well said with us. For example, some people don't like uh, chorale-based improvisation and they start with three types of melodies. But a lot of organists um, enjoy church melodies and hymns and chorales. And um, and that's where they should start, obviously. I think it's much easier to start to improvise on a given melody, you know, as you take a hymn tune and you know, work on it and around it. At least that you don't have to worry about creating your own melody. 
So I think it's easier to start with improvising on the hymn tunes. Agree. And um, to keep things simple, I would just uh, probably stick to two voices at first. Soprano would be the melody you know, from the hymn tune and the bass in the left hand could be uh, the foundational notes of the harmony, note against note, right? Yes, that's a possibility. One, three, five, one four, five, tonic, dominant, subdominant, things like that. And then once you get used to one, four, five, you can add other, uh, other scale degrees, always creating um, sweet sounding intervals of major and minor thirds and major and minor six, sometimes fifths and octaves, but only in opposite direction with the soprano. Okay, Pedro would like to know uh, about choosing appropriate registration. This is uh, a broad topic, obviously, but again, uh, it, dep it would depend on what kind of music he is practicing right now. Is it a choral-based work or is it a uh, free composition? Yes, Sosha? Yes, true. But usually, you know, if you could help yourself for making just a few combination of organ stops, I think it would be enough for like a beginner organist. So one type of registration would be like full organ, you know, organo pleno, for loud preludes and postludes, playing on one manual. And then, you know, like uh, softer registration, either on one manual or on two manuals, if you ha want to solo out a melody. So for that type of registration, if it's a soft, uh, you know, registration on one manual, you could just add, you no know, two flutes or maybe two flutes and some strings or maybe just strings to play something really soft. And then, you know, if you want to solo out the melody, you would play on the other manual, like a solo voice, you would add, let's say, oboe for solo voice or corne for solo voice and accompany on another manual. If, you know, corne is loud, maybe you could use eight foot principle for the accompanying hand. Or, you know, if it's a uh, soft read, maybe you would accompany with one flute or a couple flutes. And you would, you know, play pedals accordingly. Probably with super 16 and 8 foot flute. If it's not enough, maybe you could add like principal 16 foot or octave 8 foot. And see how it works in a balance. With your hands. And for pieces which have to be played on one manual, you don't have to play only with um, principal chorus, right, with mixtures. You could just play with one principal or two principals or three principals, mm, expanding the sound or even mixing flutes with uh, principals if it's a, more of a, a romantic work. But even in, in, in some cases in Baroque, uh, later Baroque music, you could double principles with flutes, right, Osha? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. This is a very broad topic, but I, we hope you, you get the starting idea for yourself. Okay, and um, uh, changing his finger touch from pianist to an organist, what would you like to suggest, Osha? Well, when I'm thinking about touch, you know, about articulation, I am always thinking about uh, how, how, you know, how the instrument on which I'm playing is constructed in itself, you know, and that helps me, you know, to grasp that idea. That basically piano, it's really a percussion instrument. Because, you know, the hammer hits the string, so you, you use more of strength in your fingers when you are playing the piano. And you hit from the top. And when playing organ, you always need to keep in mind that it's basically the, 
wind instrument. So, you know, pipes are operating through the wind system. And you don't need to hit the key from above, you need to keep in touch with keyboard at all the time. And to also re release your notes while holding the, the key also. Uh, don't lift the, the hand into the air like we see sometimes people do. Uh, but just uh, release the note but keep the contact with the keys. That and will help with, with control. Yes, and also keep in mind that when we are playing on the piano, the pressing key is more important than uh, releasing of the key. But on the organ, both are equally important. The pressing down the key and releasing it. Correct. And uh, things that hold him back, of course, time. He doesn't have enough time and access to an organ. Well, time, you have to make time, obviously. You don't have to practice for hours and hours, but if organ playing is your goal, you want to achieve something, you have to make time, some time, right? Also sure. Regular practice. Sure. Well, you have to squeeze it into your daily routine, you know, and find time, make time for it. Mm. Maybe you could sleep less for like half an hour or, you know, to spend less time surfing on the internet or whatever you do, you know. Where that time goes, right? You have to do some analysis. Where does your time go? the most time and uh, maybe it's not all productive maybe it's sometimes draining your energy because organ playing is still creative activity and um, we suggest you do it before before some management activity if you have to answer emails do do creative activity first and when you're tired you answer emails then Things like that, not necessarily about answering emails, but but there are two types of activities, right? Two types of brain modes, creative and management, and um, and it's best to do creative part first. Some people want to do it early in the morning, some people later in the at night even, but. It depends on your personality, obviously. And access to an organ, Osha, can he solve that problem? Well, I don't know what is his situation. I don't know how many churches his neighborhood has. But uh, obviously, if I wouldn't, couldn't access an instrument at home, I would reach, you know, for the local churches and try my luck where. Maybe, you know, in in return for, you know, accessing their instrument, for playing their instrument, I could offer to do something nice for the church, maybe to do some volunteer work, like ushering or, you know, playing the organ during the service, doing something nice for the community. And in return, I might access the instrument. That's right. And um, nowadays, you can actually build your own organ setup at home. Quite, um, quite. Um, it's quite affordable. In in many cases, you just can you can have just one keyboard for starters. Um, so but well, you know, you will have to add the computer to it, and your computer would have to be good, you know. M maybe but Pedro has that. Well, you know, we don't yes, know. yes, but I remember the frustration when we started to play Hauptwerk with, you know, like, like just a regular computer, and the, we would get like sound delay, and it made me so angry and. In Frustrated. this case, what we should have done, but we didn't know at the time, we should have had uh, an audio, external audio card. That's it. So, yes, and then look what starts when you need external audio card, and later you need that, and this, and that. And 
and new wire and new equipment and no it just never ends basically so <laughs> but it's fun it's fun to build your own organ well if you can access you know the local church organ for your practice then do it you know that's true but you know uh, sometimes we also access our uh, church organ but we go there and we cannot practice there because there has to be silence because of some funeral or something you know always it's it's good to have a backup instrument I'm not against um, pipe organs, not at all. I'm all for it, and obviously it's much better than electronic or virtual organs. But to have an instrument at home, just in case, worth, worth uh, the time and trouble, I think. Okay, guys, if you, if you enjoyed this conversation, Please leave us a comment and maybe send us more of questions. We love helping you grow. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. This podcast is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online. It has hundreds of courses, coaching and practice materials for every area of organ playing, thousands of instructional videos and PDFs. You will not find more value anywhere else online. Total Organist helps you to master any piece, perfect your technique, develop your sight reading skills, improvise or compose your own music and much, much more. Sign up and begin your training today at organduo.lt and click on Total Organist. And of course you will get the first month for free too. You can cancel anytime. If you need one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can check out our page on Buy Me A Coffee platform. Find out more at buymeacoffee.com slash organduo.